Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. I didn't. She didn't start off laughing. Anymore. I did not. I controlled myself. See? I can do it. It's <laughs> just not something I really want to do at the time. No. Yeah, I was born to laugh. You know what? With the way life is, you need to, because if you're not laughing, you're crying. And you know what? A sense of humor will get us through an awful lot. So uh, I advocate it. Always. Mm -hmm. If you feel like laughing, go for it. I used to teach tease my dad because, oh, he had... He, he put dad sense of humor, like, to shame. Like, he just, he was over the top. Um, if you trace our family history, um, my dad's a descendant of Benjamin Franklin. Oh. Um, actually, my dad husband. looks a lot like Benjamin okay. Franklin. Right. It, was, it was kind of funny. And so I used to tease him that, you know, Benjamin Franklin was the first man to experiment with shock therapy and it screwed up the generations years after. Because <laughs> so if you know, if like if you knew my dad and his siblings, like it just, yeah, it's, yeah, it okay. was one of those things. My dad, like we used to drive like really old, old cars. And so. Didn't everybody back in the day? No, like. Oh. We're talking like 80s. Dad was still driving. you are younger than you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So he liked the big Lincoln town oh, cars. The yes, ones that, yeah. the reason they're called a town car, because yeah. they could hold the whole town. And so he would pull up to a gas station. And the kid, you know, this high school kid would come up, you know, it was like, you know, how much? And dad would sit there, $5 or fill, whichever comes first. And the sad part is there was a lot of those guys that would look at dad and going, I don't think a fill would f is gonna, you know, five or sorry, five, I don't think five dollars is gonna fill it. And then I'm sitting there going, "Oh man, oh. he's found his life job." <laughs> this is his last step. Yeah, you know, it's and, called the Peter Principle. Yeah, so it just, <laughs> you know, Dad trying to be funny and he, you know, so but it just, yeah, Dad. And, Sometimes there are people if you, you know, you do have to be of a. A certain level of understanding in order to get some jokes. Yeah, but that just it was, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, shock therapy. Don't do it. It screws yeah, up generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, all right. Now, before so, we forget, yes, because we did this last week and totally forgot. Yes, we did. So you'll notice the quilt behind us. This is Carrie's quilt. I'm so Vanna you, today. Oh, you're Vanna. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll note. Remember a few weeks ago. Because mm -hmm. I have no concept of time. It, uh, Carrie that, showed us how to do multiple half square, yes. cut, multiple half square triangles. This is what she cut it this for. This is the result. This so is the reason this is she what, was making. That. This is why she needed four billion half yes, square triangles. Exactly. Yeah. And needed a way to. Isn't it stunning? It is. It's just like the. I don't know. It just grabs me. The design yeah. just grabs me. Yeah. You kind of get lost in the depths. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's an amazing quilt. Yeah. So um, come check it out. It'll probably have to go down for Thursday for Kimberbell Club. Yes, because you'll need the wall. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. What it is. All right. Um, if you come in today, you're going to notice a whole bunch of empty shelves yes. because we are trying to make room for guess what? New, New fabric coming in. in. Yeah, it's on. It's coming in. We don't have an exact date because no. it's skids. Yes. And so we just know that it's coming. And based and on, not. yeah, based on what the the time frame of how much it usually. So it should be in any day this week. Yes. And yeah. I'm thinking the worst possible day because it's going to be a packed day is when it's coming in. So Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty. Yeah, because that's a pretty busy day. So. so you have to come, you know, check, check it out because yes. we've got... There's like, already fabric that's relatively new in and now we've got, got more. more. And this coming. is our Christmas yeah. stuff. Yes. I've had some yep. sneak peeks at some of oh, it. Me too. Oh, me too. Me too. I just hope there's some left by the time I get back. Well, that's what you get for leaving. She's leaving me. She yeah. flies out tomorrow. I'm not leaving you. I am going to them. There's a difference. She's leaving me. Um... <laughs> I'm Maybe going to see my counseling. daughter and my grandchildren, <laughs> so hey, you know, and it is very hot. It I heard, we have, okay, so 
Eastern Canada is having a heat wave. They're yes. their heat dome. And yes. so they're all melting. Yes. Calgary and the surrounding areas had frost warning yes. last night and they woke up to snow. And then here, our weather just, oh, I don't really know what yeah. I want to do. That's and right. it just, yeah. it's that, it's not really. It's Canadian weather. It's, the... <laughs> yeah, it's just Canadian weather. Um, and those of us who have been around a while, we're used to it. I am not used to the heat, though. One of the reasons I live here. <laughs> seriously, seriously. I The heat, the extreme temperatures of the east is just not my idea. And I, it's there's humid. No reason for and it's it. humid. Yeah. So it's like 40 plus humid. Yes. Yeah. It's tomorrow when I land, it will feel like 44. 44. Now, any of you who are my age can remember when we had a different temperature look and that works out to 111. We are close to boiling temperature. <laughs> it, okay, it's kind of like when we went to the Philippines, right? Because it's hot and it's humid there. So I remember landing at the airport and it's like air conditioning and cool and everything else like that. As soon as those sliding doors open and you walked out, it felt like you were just yes. hitting a solid yes. wall. And the 10 steps it took us from the door to the thing, we're all drenched. Yes. And it's just yeah, like, exactly. oh, we're going to die. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what it, I know what it feels like when you step out, step into the airport general part where you're picking up your baggage in Ottawa. You can already smell and feel the fact that it's hot. It's yeah. not because the air conditioning is on, but you can feel it. And then you step out that door and it is, it is like a blanket hits you in the face. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. We all miss you. Well, I'm, I'll miss being here, but I am going to have some fun. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, you enjoy your that. While you're gone, though. Yes. I'm getting some guest hosts, yes. so I don't have to do this by yes, myself. Yes, that's right. And then that. So you guys are going to have to stay tuned to see who I've caught. I mean, asked, or they willingly jumped yes, at this opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, like every one of them willingly jumped at it. Uh -huh. They asked yes. me if they could help. No, they didn't. <laughs> Shh, let me, let I didn't jump at this. <laughs> you okay. suggested it. I simply <laughs> suggested this as, you know, some, a reach out. And I end up here. But that's okay. I've signed, kind of gotten used to it. Um, my family doesn't know. <laughs> they don't know I do this. But anyway, moving on. I'm moving on. Yes. All right. So, um... Gone. <laughs> yes, it's in I'm away, not gone. Anyway, so <laughs> our topic today. <laughs> oh no, hang on. Classes, upcoming yeah, we classes got some upcoming first. classes. So Thursday, it's Kimber is Bell Club. Kimber Bell Club. If you haven't signed up. Definitely do that. Mm -hmm. uh, come join us in person. Yes. We have yes. so much fun. Bring some show, show and tell of the things I that you've done. I have show and tell contributed. Well, yes, we have a picture because you're taking it with you. Well, yes. I, no one, you, you can't see it till Heidi sees it. She hasn't seen it. So that's okay. why. Otherwise, I would have. Uh, yeah, but it. if your family doesn't know about this, you wouldn't have seen it. It doesn't matter. If somebody happened, it's with my luck. <laughs> One of her friends would go, oh, I saw your mother on a video. Oh, yeah. Oh, you should see oh, your dream Kimber, skirt. But no. But Kimber Bell Club, we don't record that one. So you could have shown it and it, no one would have seen it. This is very true. Oh, well, my my bad. Anyway. So, yeah. So bring your stuff. Show us. It doesn't have to be just Kimber Bell. No. It can be anything that you've done. It doesn't have to be 100% embroidery. Yep. It could be, you know, a mix of both. And actually, you know what? If you want to bring a quilt, you know, that has no embroidery, that's okay. Yeah, I like seeing. We just want to see what you're what doing. What you're working on. We what love celebrating on. what you're doing. Yeah. And, then that, and so. after I have given it to Malachi, I will post a picture of the quilt. Awesome. We <laughs> want to see that. Everybody's heard about it so much. <laughs> they deserve to see it. And okay. it's done. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Kibbeborough Club is this Thursday here, Saturday in Chilliwack. Yeah. Then there's Taking the Mystery Out of the Machine Needles with Tom on Saturday. There's some yes. spots left. Always a valuable thing. Um, I sit in any chance I get because it, there's so much information it's hard to take take it all in, even though I make and notes and everything, but still. It's when just... you, you take it the once and you're not doing something that 
that information. So yes. it kind of goes in one yes. and out the other. Absolutely. And yeah. then you come across that and going, oh, I, you know, you're doing something different. And then so now that information that yeah. wasn't relevant before now becomes yes. relevant. So yeah. it's always good. Yep. And, uh, and then sit and sew on Monday. Yeah. Um, and recreating the t-shirt. I think that's Tuesday next week. I don't know. Um, there, that'll be taught with Monica, the one who also um, does our surgery classes, which is full, by the way. Um, anybody who's interested in the levels one, two, and three of the surgeries with Mo surgery class with Monica, um, sign up for the waiting list because if there's if we have enough for a waiting list and we can get Monica in, maybe we can get a set of them when I'm back because I didn't get to take them. Yes. If my surgery didn't work. Yeah, I got to get mine in. First, first and then, so time. that, you know, think about that. Just get in there so don't forget to take the class. <laughs> it's all self-serving. Yes, yes. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, a couple weeks ago, we had Tom here talking about um, the different brands and yes. all that fun mm -hmm. things. And he made a comment um, about the basics that you need just to kind of get started with sewing. Because yeah. some people think that it's like huge, huge, huge yeah. investment and in all these things. Because they walk into like a sewing store and they see all of these gadgets, all of this stuff, like walls of notions mm -hmm. and think that it and becomes so overwhelmed. Yeah. And we decided today just kind of to start for those who are looking at getting started with quilting, what is the very basics that you need right. to get started with? Because yes, there's mm -hmm. notions and this and that and all these cute little fandangled, you oh, know, yeah. gadgets or whatever, but for the most part, they are not needed. They are. They nice. Enhance. Yes. They make some things easier, easier. to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, or just, you know, they're great to buy. You know, kind of like those who are addicted to kitchen appliances. Yes. You know, there you go. you've yeah. got like, you know, 14 different coffee makers, you know, just, but you only use the one. I have three. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just like those kitchen. Yeah, you just like those yeah. kitchen, you know. My mother in law, she's funny. So when she came to f back over from the Philippines, like she brought her KitchenAid with her and so it sat on her counter sat on her counter sat on her counter for like 20 years she never ever used it and then so she decided to give it to me because I do bake and so she gave it to me so I could use it a week later she went out and bought a brand new kitchen aid <laughs> that is sat on her counter <laughs> So she just wanted to fill up the counter space. You know, so they're, 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 they're just, I'm going, if you want to give, give me the new one. <laughs> like, oh, it's bigger. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but no, yeah, so but, she's just, she's just funny. She's got, we, we, we all do that. Yeah. But we, we do, don't yeah. need to do that no, with no. quilting. So we're going to start with the five ones that you kind of need to start with. Okay. Yes. So the first thing is a sewing machine. Yeah. Okay. We have them anywhere from couple hundred bucks up to a couple billion I mean <laughs> 20 yeah, 30,000 dollars yeah. yes. so you don't have to start off no expensive no. and fa fancy as Tom was in there saying yeah. straight stitch straight you stitch. want a machine that can do straight stitch hopefully you can either it comes with a quarter inch foot or you it's a machine that you can Add a quarter inch yes. to it. Yes, quarter that inch. That yeah. is important. One of those, yeah, one of those things that you can get around it, but it's one of those things that you can handle. Um, yeah. Mine. Uh, when I first started quilting, I didn't have a quarter inch foot, um, and so what I took and did is I put a piece of tape. I measured a quarter of an inch. Yeah out from the needle and put it so it could, but I can't sew straight, so that wasn't very helpful. Not Quarter helpful. inch foot okay. helps because it's got that blocker. It does get, yes, you know, it so gives you, you that, you, or a cloth guy, but those are, sometimes when I look at what I have to sew with now, I think, how did I ever start out? Like, how did I ever complete anything? Because I didn't have even half of what I have now. Yeah. So the there's steps, it's increments. As you move along 
and you realize, oh yeah, like, okay, I'm addicted, you know, like, then you start to add all the extra, the fancies once and the you helpful know, accessories. Yeah. Once yeah. you know what you want to take and do and yeah. how you want to quilt, because there's so many different styles of quilting and so many different ways to finish off the quilt. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so like one of the big things is is you can quilt on your machine or you can send it off to yes. a long arm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know some people who just, they don't ever, they are happy to make a quilt top, yep. but never ever want mm -hmm. to quilt on their yeah, machine. Exactly. So buying a machine that has quilting abilities and the big doesn't neck matter. or yeah. whatever it's not a benefit necessarily no, no. to them because they're not going to use those features right. so why spend that money on that when you could spend it on, on something else exactly yeah. so you want to target it that way and then there's others who want that experience yeah. of quilting on their machine because they don't want to send it out to a long armor because it's just that extra expense yes yeah and so it just it's kind of those things so starting off small and learning and understanding like what yeah. you like to take mm -hmm. and do. So for example, you know, like we've got the one here, you know, with the half square triangles, yes. yeah. you know, that's a lot of piecing together. Some people might find that that's very, very tedious and that's not what they want to take yeah. and do. Where they would rather take, you know, a panel and add yes. a few borders uh, yes. to it yeah. and voila. You know, so there's, you know, so many different types of quilting. Yeah. So it's best to get started small then you know where you want yes. to invest that money exactly. in doing those kind of things. You can you can feel your way then yeah. of where you want to go, how you want to, how it gets quilted, you outside. Yeah. We yeah. have beginner classes, and we run yes. them quite regularly. They are great to get started. And they'll give you a list of kind of the, some of the stuff that you need and pretty much includes mm -hmm. what, what we've got here. But it gets your feet wet and gets you really an idea of what you, yes. you know, because you're not making process. a huge quilt. No. You're making relatively a lap size quilt. Um, and that can help you. Plus, if you do decide you are going to start quilting on your own and you need um, a machine with a bigger throat, now you have a smaller machine you started out with to take to class. Yeah. So there's always benefits yeah. and, and things like that. And sometimes, you know, machines... You, Something happens to them, they have to go down, and they're in here. Having a backup machine is great. Yeah, because that Especially. empty hole in the sewing room, it's stressful. Yeah, it is. Okay, so sewing machine. You know, come talk to us, but basically, as long as it can sew straight, yep. and just a basic machine to get you started is mm -hmm. all you need to get That's started. Right. Nothing fancy. Nope. Um, we can do fancy, but that comes. That comes, you know what you with, time. That yeah, comes with time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. so... Um, Rulers. Next. Okay, rulers. you got to be able to cut your fabric, so you need a ruler. So there are several things come in several different sizes, several mm -hmm. different lengths, all those kind of things. So if you were to start off, there's kind of there's two rulers that yeah, you kind of <laughs> you need to yeah, start with. We are, we couldn't decide which one. If you could only have one ruler, which one would you did we think you should go with? Me, I suggested the six and a half by 18 or 24. Okay, this this was w the way I saw it. Okay. Because you you can now do the full, um, you know, width of your, uh, your fabric. Lori felt a square one. A 12 by 12. Yeah. Is better a twelve by twelve. This is a, is not. This is a even nine you and can a half get away with. An, the, we didn't you have could one. square up your squares easier with a square ruler. Since there are, I don't even know how many sizes of rulers there are. There are a lot. I think myself. I by this point in time, I probably have five or six different sizes. May not know where they all are, but I do have them. So it is a, it's something you want to think about or talk to people who are either teaching the class you're taking or who have already entered into it to see where you would want to go. If you can only buy one, like let's say your budget is only going to give you the opportunity to buy one ruler. This, if you want to go the width of your fabric, you would be moving along. Depends. This one isn't as easy to square up. 
if you're doing a like yeah. a a 10 inch square so, so this is kind of one where you, it's not one size a, fits all it's, it's not it's not a one size fits all but it's not a um a one you know like you buy one sewing yes. machine you know the, this one with rulers i think it really is you do need to you need a long one because and you want the length so that you can cut and you can always use smaller yeah. and everything yes. else like that but you do need the the square one especially if you're doing blocks because you want to be yes. able to i didn't have a square one one when i first started and i tried to square up did I. Yeah. some with those long rulers and my blocks were just not turning out so well and it was it was very very difficult because you try and use your mat and you try and do this mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work yeah. so i think this really is a one where it's kind of a twofer you need a ruler but it's yeah. kind of a ruler that for length and a ruler for squaring. Yeah. I really do think. And accuracy is essential in quilting. <laughs> yes. Because um, you've me. got a quarter inch um, seam. With clothing, it's five eighths. You, there's leeway. And there's a reason there's the leeway. But with this, there is no leeway with quilting. You need that, the accuracy in this. Well, and, and when you're when you're squaring things up, I mean, when you're doing your blocks and you have to square up those blocks, the thing is, if you don't have your accuracy, and this is a my guilty little secret, <laughs> when Tom, this is like way way back when, when they were in the cul-de-sac, and so I had taken a beginner quilting class, and it was just a sample quilt where each block was different, and so. Like I said, I only had the one ruler with it, and um, I was, you know, trying to, you know, to make this work. And so the blocks, when they were finished, were supposed to be 12 by 12. And again, I also didn't have the quarter inch foot. I used tape right. and stuff because we learned how to do it a little bit there, and then we did some sewing at home. And, and then that it was a very, very tight budget I was, I was starting with. And um, when I was done, the blocks were supposed to be 12 inch, 12 and a half inch square. I had anything ranging from like 10 and a half up to like 14. <laughs> this did not go, to, you know, at, yeah. So I, w I was the special child in the class. Um, and so it made it very hard to square things up because some of those blocks you needed to square things up before it got sewn yeah. into the thing and it wasn't and then there the seams didn't line up and it was just it it was a mess and so i think you know knowing that what i know now and what i would know back then is i really would have bought uh, two uh, two rulers yeah. a long one and a square one um the 12 by 12 is best I mean, yes, simply yeah, for, 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 for a starter, because like there down, is a 24 yeah. by 24 yeah. and I, it's, it's huge or whatever. Most blocks though do end up to be eight, depending yes. on the type that you're doing. So, but 12 and a half by 12 and a half really is your, yes, your best. Yes, you can do anything smaller than. Yeah. Than, so you, yeah. you want to kind of do that. Um, next. So, yeah. So that would be, okay. The next is cutting. Yes. Okay. Again, accuracy counts. Accuracy counts. Yes. Okay. We kind of default going, well, I've got scissors, so that's good enough. In quilting, scissors don't cut it. Back in the <laughs> top. Oh, wow. That no, went out. Oh, I'm like, oh, that was God. just cool. <laughs> Where's Tom when you want him? Um, that's, I mean, I know back in the day. Back in the day, that was totally unplanned. <laughs> was, um, was back too in much the of a day, uh, before we had rotary cutters, and we are going way back, um, they used scissors. But they also used templates. They yes. Like they had paper or cardboard templates to cut out, you know, to mark their, what, their square or their piece or whatever, and then they would cut it with their scissors. We now have the advantage of the rotary cutter, hence why we have rulers now. So, um, I also have one that looks like that. Um, I, th I have four or five. Uh, there's different styles. Exactly, there's there's yes. this one, which is ergonomic, which yes. is comfortable. Um, this one was there's a pink one back. One. There's the upright yeah. one. There's a couple of different. So, All it doesn't kinds. really yeah. matter. No. 
The size is you want the 45. You want the 45. Uh, you want good blades. Um, I prefer the, what What are they called? The okay. ultimate or whatever. Yeah, what the called? ultra or the tiger. Yeah, the, the, we, again, we had a video on that a yes, few weeks ago. They last longer. They Seriously, do. Seriously, the, the sharpness lasts longer. Um, you don't require as much pressure when you're cutting. Yes, yeah, it's, it's easier. And, you know, like as we get older, um, you don't want to have to be applying as much pressure because you just don't have the strength so um a better blade and it's amazing what happens when you put in a new blade it's like whoa how long has it been since i put a blade in there <laughs> because it's like the difference is night and day trust me yeah so yeah. with the rotary cutter you can cut right next to those your your rulers yeah so when you measure six inches you're cutting right at that yes. six inch yeah when you try and use a pair of scissors You've got, there is that thickness, yep. and you can't get that quite. So you're cutting it now at six and, and, a bit. and an eighth, yes. or mm -hmm. six and a quarter, yeah. depending. And then it's harder to hold the ruler and get your, yes. you know, scissors in there. And so then you get the wobbles, and it's and not straight. you don't straight. want the wobbles. Yeah, don't Again, want the wobbles. accuracy is key here. Yeah, yeah wobbles yeah. is not good in any no. sense of the no. thing. So then the third thing. What? Oh, no, that was three. More? That was three. No, uh, no, I meant third thing with the combo of your ruler, your cutter, your third item that's necessary. Yes. The only thing is what you have to watch. Okay, this is the key. When you have, you need to have fabric specific rotary blades and fabric specific uh, cut. Scissors, there we go. Oh, yes. Once you use either one of those on paper, cardboard, something oh. in the kitchen. Cardboard. <laughs> cardstock. Anything else, you damage the blade enough yeah. that it is no longer sharp enough to cut your fabric. Yes. Okay. So, you need to buy, you know, like I used to use my rotary cutter. For when I did paper crafting as well, scrapbooking and everything else like that. But I had a rotary yeah. cutter for sewing and yeah. rotary paper, cutter yeah. for yeah. Um, uh, sewing. Yeah, sewing and paper crafting. Just because once you use that blade yeah. that way. My, so a short little story. I used to do just garment sewing before I started with quilting and whatever. And I was taking classes at Algonquin. And somebody gifted me a pair of tailor shears and they were like, Oh, they were beautiful. I mean, seriously, they were so lovely. They'd have lasted a lifetime. I came home from school one day, and my first husband, I would never slander Walt in this way, my first husband had used them to trim carpet. I... I I can't even describe what I felt. <laughs> it well, was like I was technically stunned. carpet is a fiber. <laughs> but I mean they were yeah. the, they were now sprung and there yeah. was absolutely nothing that could have saved them. And I to this day <laughs> I've been I'm divorced from this man since 1986 and it still bothers <laughs> me. Yeah, my kids know that if they're getting scissors do not touch Exactly. My, my sewing know, scissors so, because yeah. I'll use them on, on. Do not do it. Yeah. So. Okay. So. Cutting yeah, board. Cutting board. Again, we talked about a cutting board a while back. Yes, we did. Um, but you do need. And how to care for it. And how yeah. to care for it. So you do need a good cutting board. Yes. And Again, buy the largest size you can afford. Simply because you don't want to, I mean, we can show this, let's move this out of the way. So if you're cutting, because a lot of times, no matter what you're doing with, with cutting, is you're going to cut strips. Okay, so I got fabric here. All right. This is it folded in half the way you'd buy it off the bolt. Yes. Okay, so if you want to pull the, the uh, ruler. So, okay, so I'm going to just flip this down so you guys can kind of see this. But you'll see why it's important. Okay, so if you're cutting that, you can see my fabric goes over and above um, the cutting mat. This is a smaller one. So if I'm trying to cut that here, well, I'm going to have to shift the fabric. And every time you move your fabric, you're going to take and 
risk losing that measurement, yes. get a yeah. wobble in there and stuff. So this again is why, so just in case you guys can see it. There yeah, we go. From, yeah. When you got the longer ruler, you can do you know, all the, the way across. All yeah. the way across. And if you have a bigger board, you don't that, have yeah. to so shift. So that's yeah. why you want at least a board, what, 20? At least a 20. I think yeah. it's a 26. I don't think 26. It, I think. Yeah. yeah, so 20, yeah, 26 gives you a little bit of extra. Yeah, 18 by 26 it would be if, the, if that's the sizes. I'm sorry, I don't know. I know. I have big ones yeah. now. We Again, work here. I started out small. I have big ones now. So we work here. It's not like we know Yeah, that's anything. right. It's not like <laughs> no, no, no. We have different strengths. That's right. Um, yeah. No, I just, yeah. I don't remember. It, you know, and different companies have them in different sizes. And so trying to remember all of that size. I mean, I have a hard enough time remembering my children's names. Like, I'm going to remember what size of boards the different See, companies I only have in. one child. I can remember her name quite easily. <laughs> So, so yeah your board. cutting board yes. and this so this the cutting board it protects your blade on your rotary cutter so it doesn't get dull yes. as fast provides a nice place it protects the surface yes. um so check out our video on how to care for, for it yes yes um because that's important you yes. want it to last as long as possible so, you want so to treat it well. Be careful with it. Don't let your children paint it. You no, sewing never, desk with never, it. Never, never, never. After you get a new one. Never. Exactly. <laughs> yes. You know, like children need to not know these things. Don't uh, touch it. Okay. Don't touch it. <laughs> and our fifth essential item. Aside from fabric. Okay. Aside from fabric. Fabric yes. is good. Good we, thread. We need to do another thing on just fabric. Yes. Okay. Good thread. Thread. Now, when you walk into a thread store, you're going to find a, or well, a sewing store, we mean walls of thread. Yeah. Okay. There's cotton, there's polyester, there's rayon, there's this, there's surgery. There's, okay. So when you're quilting, you want to use cotton, cotton thread and a good quality cotton thread. The best thing about taking care of your thread is you want to make sure... You're buying good quality. Yes. Yes. Um, I know we like to look for ways to save money, and we find really good deals on cheap thread. Um, I know a few people, you know, dollar stores got it, you know, really good price or whatever. The problem with thread, okay, it is a fiber, and it does break down over time. This is what's holding your quilt together. You are putting a lot of time and effort and uh, love into these these items that you make. Yes. Quilt, table runner, I don't care what it is. You are putting you in there. So you don't want to cut corners no. with your thread. But you also need to take care of your thread. Okay. So when you're storing your thread at home, don't store it in direct sunlight. Right. It will break down the thread. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want dramatic temperature changes. So you don't want it in an area like um, if you're storing it at a pla you know, in a storage room and you only pull out what you need when you need it and the place gets cold a lot and hot and cold, whatever. You don't want dramatic de temperature changes. Because as the fur thread breaks down, so will your quilt. Um, I don't know... Um, I've had older quilts. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny, my grandmother made me a quilt. Like she made quilts for all of us when we were younger. That's when us older grandkids got quilts. <laughs> the younger ones, not so much, because by that point, yeah. there was just too many of us. She had 10 kids. So. Oh, you were love the woman. Mm hmm. This is years of, year, way back when it was feasible. Yes. Um,. My quilt started falling apart after several years. And it's funny because we I talked with my grandmother about it. And the one thing she said that she never skimped on was thread. And so when my quilt fell apart, it was never, ever at the seams. At the seams. <laughs> Those seams were nice yeah. and solid and stuff. But there was, she liked to do... Um, scrap quilts yes yeah. so she would use 
and she was of the era, you know, use it up, wear it out, yes. you know, type yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So when she would make these, she would buy some fab, like fabric for them. But usually what she would take and do is as something was wearing out, she would then, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. she'd cut out that and then just use the good parts. But you could tell where she used older fabric that was not very good yeah. quality because that's where the quilt was breaking yeah. apart. That's where you get that thread yeah. bare and from the multiple washings. So if you want something to last over time, don't skimp on your thread right. and don't skimp on your fabric. Exactly. exactly. You're going to have to do one on fabric. One yes, yeah, this is true. But the least expensive things you can do to keep your quilt together, to make sure it, your machine is working well, good needles, good thread. And there's plenty of good thread out there. We have, the, we carry, um, like we have Aurifil, Mettler, uh, Mettler uh, Iris, um, but, and Diamond is the embroidery brand we carry, I think. So um, plenty of good options out there. Um, and there's more than that, but like these are the ones we carry. Just use good thread. Yeah. Good needles. The reason we use cotton thread yeah. is because our fabric is cotton. And so you don't want to use like a polyester. I always match my thread to my fabric. Whatever it is, I'm matching yes. my thread. When so that you because if you use something that's stronger than the other, you tend to get there's, extra there's wear and tear. There's going to be wear and tear. Yeah. So um, just a few things to to think about when you're starting quilting. So yeah, so if you're looking at getting quilting, this is a great reminder for those of us who've yep. been going at it for a little bit, getting started and, you know, instead of feeling overwhelmed, just start with these these simple yes, basics. Yes. Come in and talk to us. Take one of our classes. Uh, Absolutely. The, Rita. Yeah, that uh, won't start up again till September. No, but she's but, our, she's our beginner. Yes, yeah. Yes, so she yeah. teaches our amazing job. She yes. does an amazing job in those Everybody classes. Everybody loves her classes. That and so you definitely right want to take those. Yeah. Um, I'm tempted to take one. Just, I've been quilting for a while on those kind of things, but sometimes you forget and or you learn something one way that isn't necessarily the effective way to do yes. it. Yes. Yes. So it's, it's like I take your um, embroidery design class, shifting it to the, the laptop to your USB on a regular basis or the needle class. <laughs> she laughs because I take it every time. not on a regular basis. I take it every time she offers it. Because and, she uh, wrestles me to the ground. So you're going to do that class again. <laughs> and every opportunity I have to take Tom's needles. I take that class as well because there's always something you missed, um, something that just slipped by. It's like rereading a book. You're going to find something else in there. Same thing. Same thing. Yes. Here. So um, anytime there's an opportunity to learn to add to your creative skill. Yeah. yeah. Now, there. these are your five basics. Like, yeah. there's some other things like oh, pins and needles and a few other things. But depending on what you're doing will depend on how you need those. Yes. Like, if you don't ever, if you're just going to do your quilt top. Yes. And you're going to send it to the long armor and you're, you don't need to baste your quilt no. and pin it in place or whatever. Because you're they, not that, doing it. You're not doing it. So, investing, in, care yeah, of that for you. investing yeah. in pins is not something you necessarily no. need to do. Um, if you're going to do it, then you, you know, pins and clips and, you know, little different things like that. So this gets you started. And then from there, you can go, you can go from there. Yeah, right. Yeah, All right. See us. We'll help you with that. We will. <laughs> okay. So we're going to sign off. Yes. Um, um, and comment. See you in July, me. Yeah, see you in July. In the comments, comment on what you wished you would have known. Oh, yeah. When you first got that's a good one. Got that's a good one. Like yeah. what you wish you would have known. Yeah. So that helps out some of our our beginners yep. mm -hmm. and and that wish they would know oh, this. I just well. thought of other things that are essential to quilting. <laughs> it's just heavy. We need more than five, but that's okay. This this that's gets another us, this time. gets us started, and yeah. the rest kind of goes depending on the direction that yeah, you're going. Absolutely. Yeah. And okay. then that. All right. So all right. That's have it. a great day. 
sun's supposed to come out. We're supposed to start yeah. getting warmer this weekend. So enjoy the weekend. Come see us and check out the new fabric Absolutely. when it gets here. And I'll see you in July, like way in July. <laughs> if you have it melted. That's right. This <laughs> is true. Yeah. Bye. Bye.